Hello and welcome back to Cooking with Sunny. I've got a very, very important video for you today because today we're making steak. And I'm gonna take you through my step-by-step -step process. It's a six-step process in how I perfectly execute a steak. And if you found some value in this video, consider subscribing for more weekly videos just like these. Let's dive right into the recipe. Okay, so we're gonna oil our steak just a tiny bit just rub that in. This is really just to help the seasoning stick to the outside of the meat. So make sure you get both sides. By the way, we're using a porterhouse today, but you can use these six steps for any steak. It's all gonna work. Step one is gonna be to find a good steak. Do you have to spend all the money in the world on a steak from some Kobe beef that was massaged by a thousand monks and covered in sake? No, here's what you need to look for. If you go into a supermarket, right, say there's 16 ribeyes in front of you, one of those ribeyes, this is a fact, is the best one. Look for the steak that has the most fat marbled into the meat and get that steak and bring it home. Alternatively, maybe you're at a butcher. So just ask your butcher, tell them that you want the steak with the most fat marbled into the meat and they will find it for you. This is the first step and maybe the most important, so do that one right. Step two is gonna to be to temper your steak. We're gonna do this mostly so that steak will cook evenly. It's an important step, so pull your steak out of the fridge an hour before you're gonna cook it. Step three is gonna to be to season your steak. I'm using my homemade rosemary salt on this, love it. But if you don't have this, just use whatever, kosher salt, Malden salt will work. But if you wanna learn how to make this, you click that link right there, it'll take you over to the video. So from up high, just start spreading it around nice and even. Look at that, All right? Beautiful. Fresh ground black pepper. Take your time with the pepper, really. It's just gonna make for this awesome little bit of spicy crust. I mean, I can barely see my steak anymore and that's the way it should be, right? Now with the fat cap there, right? This is a porterhouse. So this is New York strip, this is tenderloin. We have that nice fat cap along the edge. Just dip that straight into the seasoning so that's all seasoned all the way around the steak flip other side step four is going to be to cook your steak i'm using a hot cast iron pan if you don't have cast iron that's okay just find a pan that's thick the thickest heaviest pan you have and use that and while it's heating up you can go and order a cast iron pan on amazon because you're gonna need one this pan has been on high heat for literally 10 minutes it's ripping hot now I'm gonna add, I'm using peanut oil, right? It's got a high smoke point, neutral flavor. Just like two tablespoons to start the process. We're gonna let that heat up another minute and then we're gonna start cooking our steak. Okay, that oil's been in for a minute, that pan is ripping hot. Now if you're making this at home and you, you put your steak in the pan and you don't hear it searing, just take it out. Don't ruin that piece of meat and start again. Heat it back up. Here we go. You hear that? Boom, that's what you wanna hear. So that's cooking now. We're gonna do it about three minutes on this side. High heat, just keep that heat high. Man, it already smells so good. So because we have a New York strip on one side, this pan is perfect for it. It's got that fat cap right here. Tilt your pan back and just allow that fat cap to kind of almost deep fry in the back of the pan. Okay, so our steak's been cooking for about three minutes on this side. We're gonna go ahead and flip it, keeping that heat ripping hot. Oh my God. Is there anything more exciting? Look at that. Continue cooking on high heat for this side another minute or two. Step five is gonna be to baste your steak. You're gonna take your steak from here to right about here, and that's what you want, man. All that butter, garlic, shallots, thyme, all that extra flavor coming into your steak is really gonna kick it up the final notch. This is so important. Baste your steak. So we're gonna add our shallots right into the oil. No butter yet. Start with your shallots. Just crushed garlic, peels on is fine. And your thyme, straight in. Hear that? Listen. That's what you want from your thyme. Now the butter right in on top of your herbs. Now we're gonna turn the heat down to low. Get all your ingredients on top of the steak. 
and just start basting it. You want to baste this like a hundred times. It's like a meditation. Just, just stand, just baste, your heat's low, it's all good. Okay, so three minutes on each side, steak out of the pan, spoon underneath so it can rest. Go ahead and just put your shallots, garlic, thyme right on top of there, let them hang out. Oh my God. Let's let it relax in just a little more butter. Right? Step six is gonna be to rest your steak. As a good general rule of thumb is you wanna rest it for half as long as you cooked it. So if I cook this for seven minutes, I'm gonna rest it for at least three and a half minutes. Follow that rule. It would be such a shame to cut into this steak after all the money and time you've spent on it and have all the blood and all the juice running out, it shouldn't be on the board, it should be in your mouth. So rest your steak. So guys, I basted this with thyme, but if you like rosemary, try rosemary, sage, do that. Sometimes I do it with basil and the basil drapes over the top and turns translucent. But you know, do it with whatever you like. So remember, a steak is a muscle and as it cooks, all those muscle fibers are shrinking up. You rest it so they can all relax back out right and get to that point of tenderness that we want that is why you rest meat and it's a very important step okay guys now we're going to slice up our porterhouse i wish you could smell what i'm smelling right now this is insane right so let's start with the new york we're going to follow the bone straight down turn the corner here at the end release the bone Here's our New York. We're going to remove the filet. Same deal on the other side. Oh my God. Right? Bone down in the middle of the plate. Oh, beautiful. Mm. This looks incredible, folks. I'm going to put the New York back into the bone. Now we're gonna slice our filet. Mm. Oh my God. This looks incredible. Into the bone. You can do some of your shallots and your garlic around to decorate the plate. That butter we use for cooking the steak is full of so much flavor. It would be a shame not to just drizzle some right back over your steak. Okay, I'm coming in for a taste on this. The smell. I, I'm sorry that you don't get to be me right now because I'm drooling. I'm wondering, New York strip first, filet, New York strip, filet. I'm gonna try the filet first. What more do you want? I really want you guys to make this and let me know in the comments. Did you blow your own mind? Because I'm blowing mine right now. Seriously, this is incredible. I'm enjoying this with some of my mango papaya coleslaw. Awesome recipe. You want to learn how to make it? Click right there. Let's try the New York. It's so good. It really is, Brandon. So that is it for today. If you liked the video, hit that subscribe button below and I shall see you next week.